Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, a.k.a. Gamer55551. Five, 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 and I am back with a My Two Cent video for this week, for a week of April um, 2nd to um, April 8th, though, where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion on. And there are going to be four stories I'm going to be talking about into the the box office returns that are coming out so far for the Super Mario Brothers movie. Hint, it's pretty good though. Um, an odd issue involving Quantum Break on Game Pass and all, um, a ruling by I think the European unions and all in terms of the whole Joy-Con drift issue, at least in Europe though, and a certain change in the situation regarding the storage for Xbox that Seagate may not be the only ones that can be developing, you know, those SD, those cards that you plug into your Xbox Series um, X and S though. And if you're interested in where I got the source of these information, links will be in the description um, down below, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. But before we get started, I like to do what I like to call the quick my two cents, stories that kind of caught my attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details else. The first one is that there apparently is, appears to be a report of basically a bug that will appear in the Resident Evil 4 remake when you reach chapter 12 and everything like that. Supposedly Capcom is addressing this issue and everything like that though, and but still a little annoying that that got there though. I haven't gotten chapter 12 yet though, but still it is very interesting. It is good that they point out with the heads up though, not to mention mercenary mode has just recently recently um, came out as a, I supposedly as a free download for the Resident Evil 4 remake though. And of course there's also the, they've added um, the controversial microtransactions to it. Uh, though, though Capcom's approach to it has been somewhat better. I'm still iffy about it to be in general though. We also learned that um, Nintendo and mobile firm D D D E N A has launched a joint venture company. Though uh, these are the same folks that did the Super Mario Run and I think Mario Kart World Tour and everything like that. Though um, apparently this has to do with the whole Nintendo network and account or anything like that. And there have been reports that Nintendo isn't going to be maybe not as heavily focused on mobile as some would have thought they would be. Though, but it will be very interesting to see how this. Um, all plays out between DENA and Nintendo. We also learned that um, SNK has announced another entry in the King of Fighter series, the global match. This is a 2D one though. And interestingly enough, um, this is also coming to the um, Nintendo Switch, which is kind of a bit of a surprise though. The thing is, is that they announced this and showed the teaser trailer um, on April 1st during April Fool's Day. And many people thought this was an April Fool's joke and all. Well. It turns out to be it isn't though. So it is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Right now there it has been reported we use rollback net codes though. No word if that will be in the Switch version or not. Um, Switch versions of games, fighting games, there has been some some games have used rollback net codes, others haven't though. I don't know what the reason behind it though. So we'll see how this one is going to play out when this one comes to the Nintendo Switch and the PS4 um, as well though. We also learned that Devolver Digital has required the Doing soft indie, um, doing soft um, indie developers, though, if I'm saying the name correctly to be exact, though. So, another studio from Devolver Digital, Digital that has um, purchased, though, they've also purchased the same folks who did the um, Series Sam series, um, as well, though. We also learned that Konami is looking to re enter the gaming arena with a Osaka studio, though, they're planning to re enter the console, re enter, you know, in terms of developing games, though. We'll see if they can do better and sort of try to re change their image, which over the years has been sort of viewed um, negatively, ranging from focus on just pinko machines to how games like Metal Gear Survivor and Contra, I mean Contra Road Core, if I'm saying the name correctly, or one of the one, the last Contra game, which did not sit very well with everyone. Um, out there um, to be exact. So we'll see if they could change the reputation and all, but let's just say the reputation has not been great um, over the years at all. We also learned that a settlement was settled by Activision Blizzard with the US Justice Department. It had to do with eSport wages suppressions and all. I mean, Activision Blizzard has so, has so many issues ranging from this to um, the treatment of employees and everything like that though. 
Um, so it's clear that they are trying to settle a lot of things though, especially since it's becoming more and more clear Microsoft will buy Activision Blizzard and it's becoming clear the acquisition will probably go through. Um, I'm just hoping that this doesn't become trade one bad seed for another type of a situation though. We also learned that Crytek was asked about a possibly a sequel or something with Ryu's Son of Rome. This was a launch title for the Xbox One back then though. It didn't really get the best response or anything like that though, but I think now, given where Microsoft is right now, I think this would be a good opportunity to maybe get take, give the title and to the series another shot, maybe do an FPS boost with the first Ryu Son of Rome though, or maybe a remake or, or a sequel or anything like that. I think now, given where Microsoft is right now, this would probably be a very good, good, very good thing to maybe try again with the series and all. We also learned that supposedly there are though there has been some folks coming out in support of the Ada Wong voice actor who voices Ada Wong in Resident Evil 4. This has to do with following reports of harassment the fem this person has been given and has basically cut basically basically eliminated their Instagram. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Instagram page all following all, a lot of these harassments though. I um, mean personally look to me. I don't support what they did to this theme, to this person though. And secondly, when you hear situations like this, it gives the fandom a bad name, and it's wonder what you wonder why people sometimes view the fandom as being toxic and all like that. We also learned that there's supposedly a rumor going around that there might be some issues between Microsoft and Square Enix. This has to do with basically Square Enix is not putting a lot of their games onto the Xbox consoles though. The rumor seems to stem that it might be Microsoft's fault and everything like that. Granted, nothing's been confirmed, so right now it's just speculation at this time though, but if, if that's the case, I'm hoping the issue can be resolved between uh, both parties, though. And we also learned that basically um, super, the um, Sony basically responded to some of the CMA's verdict, though. And some and apparently not everyone's happy with the way Jim Ryan has handled the situation. There have been some cases by him not be happy how the CMA's responded to. What many view is that he's throwing his first party studios under the bus, even making a claim without Call of Duty, Sony would go out, the PlayStation would go out of business and everything like that. It's getting to some pretty wild accusations being made by um, Jim Ryan and all. I mean, honestly, I don't really 100% buy his argument. I mean, look at the Nintendo Switch. That has been successful even without Call of Duty on the system. Granted, Nintendo would have to, granted you had to play your cards differently and market the game a little bit differently than than you would if you had Call of Duty on the system, but it shows that your system can succeed without Call of Duty, and I don't think Jim Ryan seems to have gotten that message or anything like that, though, that your system can still be a success even without Call of Duty um, in general and all. And in the movie and the TV sides of the My Chu Sen part, um, impressions of the movie, of the Super Mario Bros. movie, which I'll get to part four on, seem to are coming in so far. And based on what we've heard so far, it's kind of a split between what users are saying and critics, though. Right now, I. Right now, from the last time I checked, Rotten Tomato, the movie was considered rotten, but from the user reviews, it seems to be doing um, very good, though. So, depending on who you, depending on who you want to ask, though, either you're going to, either you're going to agree with what the critics are saying or what the user reviews are saying. So, it's going to be very interesting when I go see the movie and all, and especially considering what the box office returns are, which I'll get to part four on this one, though. We also learned that Legendary Pictures are basically has secured the movie and TV rights for the Street Fighter franchise, you know, the movie and TV rights versions of it though. Whether or not this one will be a success or not um, remains to be seen. Street Fighter, let's just say when it, outside of the animes or anything like that, any attempt has maybe mixed with little to no great results. We've had um, two movies based off of it though. The first one back in the 90s from John claude Van Damme. I think in the 2000s we had one about Chun Li, and even both of those did not perform very well. So we'll see if Legendary can do a better job with this right now. And considering where we are, where they want to do movies or TV shows based off of video games, it might have a better shot this time around, but time will ultimately tell if that's the case or not though. Uh, we um, we also learned about supposedly um, 
I also learned that there is apparently some information about the 1993 um, Super Mario Brothers movie, the live action one. And apparently there were certain changes to the script though. And apparently the directors wanted the film to rival, you know, Tim Burton's Batman movie. It's, it's from sci-fi, um, sci-fi.com though. It's very interesting to read about all the troubles that movie had gone into, which has basically gotten to the reputation of being so bad, it's good. It's also gained a cult following. And there are some reports coming out about that movie actually shooting at number one on Amazon, mostly because of where the animated Super Mario Brothers movie is um, right now, though. Um, we also learned that supposedly um, season two of Beavis and Butthead is basically coming out on April 20th, or 420, though, to be exact, though. Um, they showed off a trailer for that. Um, and all I can say is I'm definitely looking forward to the second season on Paramount+. Plus. I especially am curious to see how it's going to be with some of them showing um, Beavis and Butthead having kids. And, oh boy, I want to see how they do when it comes to handling um, parenting and all. So that's going to be uh, very interesting, though. We also learned that there are reports about how Ike Permotter, the head, former head of Marvel's Entertainment, he basically has spoken out um, basically after he has been let go by Disney and everything like that, though. It has ranging from politics to how he doesn't agree with some of Disney's approach and all. It's from The Hollywood Reporter. You can sort of um, check it out, though. And finally, we have basically Star Wars Celebration 2023, which basically has a lot of things that were announced, though, including... Two that kind of caught my attention the most, the fact that we're going to do a another Star Wars, there are several Star Wars movies though, one based on the Old Republic, one is based on the birth of the Jedis, to even one that will take place after the events of the Rise of Skywalker. So I'm very curious to see how they're going to approach that one though. And outside of Star Wars, one of the things they showed was a new trailer for the upcoming um, Indiana Jones movie though. I am definitely looking forward to see that one. If this is the last time we're going to see Harrison Ford play um, Indiana Jones, then hopefully it's uh, well worth it. To be exact, though, it looks like it takes place in the 60s and everything like that. But either way, I am definitely looking forward to that movie and all. <clears throat> okay, with the uh, Quick My True Scent part now done and the movie and TV part as well, though, we'll get started with our first story. And this one has to do with basically... The storage in your Xbox system, particularly your Xbox Series S and X. Now, one of the things I do believe that Microsoft did do right for this generation, though, has been sort of the storage option, though, where you basically can use not only up to two, two basically hard drives to hook up to your Xbox Series S and S, but a, the swappable, you know, SD cards or the Seagate cards, though, basically giving you room and everything like that, though. This is, I would say, a different approach than what we have with Sony, which has, you know, the SSD and their heatsink, which requires you to really take apart the, the PS5 to a certain degree, or first get an update for it though, then turn it off completely, take it apart, and basically carefully insert the SSD and with a heatsink. There are some SSDs that do have heatsinks attached to it as well. So it's basically hitting two birds with one stone though. And so basically when it comes to ease of use, I think the Xbox approach is definitely better. That said though, it's far from being 100% perfect. And this has to do with the fact, some of this has to do with the fact that right now the only option with the um, cards that slide in the back of your system are from basically Seagate. And we've seen prices ranging from, depending on which ones you're buying, like one terabyte being like $200 to even basically um, the two terabytes, which definitely has more space, but costs like around the same price as an Xbox Series X and a physical version of the PS5. So cost-wise, it's sort of been sort of an issue though. Well, now it seems to be that there may be another competitor entering in by WD, Western Digital. And it seems as though, what is, while this isn't confirmed though, it seems as though there might be some competition for Seagate and everything like that. In an article from GameSpot, um, it reads that, um, quote, the Xbox Series S and X console has an impressive one terabyte and 500 gigabyte SSD retrospectively, but with modern games having high storage capability, your SSD can fill up very quickly, especially if you subscribe to Xbox Game Pass. Up until now, Xbox owners had to purchase Seagate's official expansion card to expand their storage. 
Soon that will change as another major storage brand is releasing its own expansion card, um, Western Digital. The Western Digital expansion card was spotted by Wario64 on Twitter before Best Buy took the listing down. It's unclear when Western Digital will reveal, reveal its Xbox Series X and S storage solution, but Best Buy's listing has it at one terabyte um, with a cost of like $180, which is somewhat expensive, but not as expensive as say like um, the Seagate one, though. Um, right now, the pre-orders have not gone live or anything like that, though. Um, they say that the Western um, West, the WD Black C50 expansion card will seemingly be priced lower than the competitor. Seagate's one terabyte um, memory card can usually sell up to $220, or you can get, they point out Amazon right now for just $190. Alternatively, the two terabyte um, expansion card is on sale for $360. Perhaps the new, um, um, perhaps the new competitors were ushered in an era where Xbox expansion cards will receive more regular and impact, impactful um, discount though. Um, like many Western Digital other projects, other pro products, the WD Black C50 one terabyte expansion cards features an industrial as athletic and plug and play design. Simply insert the card, you know, in the back and everything like that, and you're good to go. Um, so basically though, judging by the pictures they've shown so far, it's, I mean, it doesn't look that bad though. I have a Western Digital um, two terabyte um, hard drive hooked up to my PS5 for mostly storing, you know, PS4 games or some of the smaller titles um, to be exact though. So to have like competitors and all that stuff, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing though. My hope is with this though, is that it does help drive the price down so that um, SD cards will not be, you know, like, or these, you know, expansion cards won't be as expensive though. I am curious to see about the quality and how um, effective these cards will be. Are they more better than what the Seagate is offering or not though? So it's going to be very interesting to see once this listing comes up and whether or not we could see other competitors um, come in and though. And I'm also very curious to see if Western Digital will do a two terabyte. And if so, where are they going to price it though? And it would be, um, would be cheaper than what Seagate's offering with their two terabyte um, expansion cards though. So overall though, um, I'm hoping this is true. Hopefully we'll get an official announcement and the more competitors we see in terms of this though, hopefully this means that prices will go down for some of these cards though, because <clears throat> I do admit, you know, some of it is priced a little bit um, ridiculous though, especially with the um, two um, terabyte ones. And while one seven, while well, 180, a little bit still expensive though. Um, I will admit it's somewhat better than what Seagate has been offering, which is sometimes at $200 and all. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with the European Commission um, telling Nintendo in terms of their policy, in terms of their repairs, and maybe even addressing the whole Joy-Con Joy Drift issue. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Zen video for this week. And for this one, we're gonna be taking a look at a interesting situation involving the Joy-Cons, especially um, in Europe though. Now, while there's no denying the fact that the Switch has, Nintendo Switch has been a success for Nintendo and all, there's also no denying the fact that there has been the issue of Joy-Con drift though. This is where I think this has mostly been affected by basically the left analog stick on the Joy-Con though, where sometimes it might drift or might not respond as well or anything like that though. Now there have been several situations ranging from consumer advocacy groups to even lawsuits being filed um, against Nintendo and all. Well recently it seems to be in Europe though, Nintendo or at least in Europe, Nintendo Europe though will be down be replacing um, your, could replace your Joy-Con basically free of charge and all. Um, this is an article from Nintendo Life that seems, here's what they have to say though. Um, Nintendo will now offer um, 
offer free repairs to faulty Joy-Cons to switch owners in the UK, European Economic Area, and Switzerland. This is according to an update to the company's support page on its UK site, which appears to be reflected on other official sites across affected t- territory, which now labels the now infamous Joy-Con drift as responsive syndrome or so-called drifting. This change, this change brings the company policy in, in line with various other regions, including North America, Latin America, and France. Um, the new policy also covers the same issue um, with um, Switch Lite, though. Nintendo, had, Nintendo notes that it, had, that it reserves the right to refuse, refuse free repair if it judges the fault comes from an unofficial modification or a cause unrelated to the stick um, defle- deflect. However, assuming you are suffering from your common or garden um, joy country, switch owners in the territory above can now get their repairs free of charges. The company has encountered criticism since early in the Switch life cycle concerning this widespread controller issue. joy con drift is caused by wear to the mechanic in the analog stick which caused false input to register making gameplay frustrated at best and impossible at worst. Nintendo has faced various legal challenges in different territories over the deflect and instigated a policy in some regions whereby Joy-Con drift, drifting Joy-Cons will be repaired for free regardless of their warrant status. Increased pressure from consumer groups and the European Union to address uh, the widespread issue has mounted, but until now, Switch owners in the UK and, the U- and Europe, outside France, have been unable to send their controllers for free repair once the war- warranted period has expired. Nintendo has previously said the wear of the analog stick is unavoidable, with hardware develop- developers from the company comparing the mechanics to how a car tire wears. Um, over time, a report from a former repair survey su- supervisor in the U.S. calls the volume of Joy-Con, um, Joy-Con controllers arriving for repair very stressful. Um, they said they reach out for um, Nintendo UK for comments on this policy change and were provided with an official statement that largely reproduces the text from the supported page and, and all that. So it's basically just an update on certain things, though. So, in a way, I definitely view this as a very good thing um, indeed, though. I think it's kind of ridiculous that even if the warrant expires and everything like that, what if, like, Joy-Con drifting, like, appeared even after that warranty has expired and all. So, it's certainly nice that they are doing this, especially for Europe, UK, and Switzerland, and everything like that. And it certainly sounds like this was, this was a long time going coming, though. I am hoping... Whatever, when the Switch successor comes out, whatever that might be, I still think it's going to be a handheld console hybrid, that, that kind of concept, though. I'm hoping that they will address the Joy-Con drift issue, though, and try to find a way to avoid running into this problem going forward um, with the Switch successor. So I'm hoping this is a problem that could be addressed um, going forward. In the meantime, I definitely think this is a good thing. I think it's good for consumers and everything like that. Um, I don't know how widespread the Joy-Con drift is in Europe or anything like that. Again, I haven't really hugely experienced it though, but I cannot deny that there are those out there who may have experienced it, um, to be exact though. So hopefully this, um, hopefully this addresses some of the concerns people had with in terms of sending their Joy-Cons in to get it repaired because of Joy-Con drifts at all in Europe to be exact. So overall, I kind of view this as sort of a good thing though. I'm glad they have updated their policy though. I won't deny there may have been some pressure from them to really, um, update their policy for Nintendo Europe had to do this though. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break and when we get back, we'll get to part 3 and for this for part 3 we'll be talking about a very odd situation involving um the Xbox exclusive Quantum Break. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of my My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a odd situation involving the Microsoft or Xbox One exclusive um, Quantum Break and all. Now, during the Xbox One era, though, when it came to first party games and so forth, there weren't, let's just say, compared to what Sony and what Nintendo may have had, though, there weren't really a whole lot that came out, to be exact, though. I mean, yeah, we had, there were games like Halo Master Chief Collection, but at the time when that launched, though, that was not in the best of states, um, 
to be exact, though. Um, Ryu, son of Warn, or son of Rome. If, sorry about that. Um, Dead, I, uh, Dead, Dead Rising Three, and all. So there were certainly a lot and lots of. There were certainly not a whole lot of first party games, at least on the Xbox One, though. One was sort of interesting, which was called Quantum Realm, developed by Remedy, the folks who did, you know, the Alan Wake, of course, the Control and the Max Payne series. Um, though this one was sort of sort of a mixture of like a TV show and gameplay type thing. I never got a chance to play it because I never had an Xbox One. But when it was coming to Game Pass, though, I was definitely worth definitely worth going to take a look at that title. Though, however, it does seem to be an issue has sort of emerged though that it apparently seems to indicate that a licensing issue has sort of made them have to pull the game off of Game Pass, much similar to some of the stuff with Froze, Forza Mo Motorsport though. This has certainly caused some Xbox fans to sort of scratch their head about, especially with first party titles and all. Well, apparently Renemy has responded to it and it seems as though that it seems to all boil down to um, a licensing issue though. In an article from Video Game Chronicles though, they've updated it say that the game will be coming back. Um, here's what they had to say, quote, or the, for the Video Game Chronicles article, oh. <clears throat> Um, reports earlier this week suggest the game was set to be removed from the subscription service despite being an Xbox exclusive, which was published by Microsoft. In a tweet by the official Remedy Entertainment twi Twitter account, these reports were confirmed, but Remedy went on to explain that the removal won't be permanent. Instead, Remedy explained that the delisting from Game Pass is due to licensing issue and the game will return once these um, issues have been resolved, though, according to them. They sort of tweeted that, quote, though, don't worry, Quantum Break will be coming back to Game Pass. It's being temporarily removed due to some licensing that expires that we were in the process of renewing. We'll let you know as soon as it's back, though. So on one hand, I think that's great that they are addressing the issue, though. But on the other hand, it is a little annoying that a licensing issue is making the game being removed from Game Pass. And that is very very unfortunate though and there are some, some and I can understand why some people are concerned considering that this was a first party game um, published by Microsoft and all. Hopefully this licensing issue is would be resolved though. I don't know if it's music related or the actor or anything like that but whatever the case is I'm hoping that it's going to get resolved soon though to see the game back on Game Pass and all that. And maybe this whole situation could spark interest in the game and maybe convince Remedy and Microsoft to work together to maybe do a sequel to Quantum Break or anything like that. I mean, again, we know that they're working right now. Remedy is working on Control 2, a remake of the first and second Max Payne, though. And we also know that they are doing a sequel to Alan Wake and all. But who knows? Maybe they'll find a way to do work with Microsoft and do Quantum Break 2 and all. Maybe they'll take a different approach with it. Maybe not. Who knows whether that happens all. But in either case, though, it is sort of an odd situation with Quantum Break. So overall, though, glad that Remedy has responded to it. this, though. Hopefully we'll see the game back on Game Pass soon, though. But very odd situation and all. And it kind of brings up the whole licensing issues and certain, to a certain degree and all. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part of the My Two Cent video. And this one has to do with the, so far, the box office returns for the Super Mario Brothers movie that's out right now. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be talking about the Mario movie, specifically the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now, this is the week that the Mario movie has finally come out, though. There have been basically a couple of clips here and there of it, too. Basically, three trailers have been shown so far. The first, the first one last year, too. Of course, the second and third trailer, though. Um, I was first skeptic when this movie was announced, though, being done by Illuminations. I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not or anything like that. But the more I started to see some of the clips and the trailers, the more I started to become, okay, this could actually work and everything like that. I do plan to hopefully go see it um, this weekend, though, to be exact, though, even though this, will go up on, this video will go up on Saturday and all. So I'm hoping to see it and give my thoughts and my take on it, though. 
But so far, despite opening on the Wednesday, though, during spring break, though, it seems in terms of a box office perspective, though, the movie seems to be getting off to a, well, a very good start, though, especially for its um, opening day, though. Um, in several articles, this one, but this one from The Hollywood Reporter, it reads that, here, let me get that. It, it reads that about Super Mario Brothers um, box office, it's huge, 195 million plus domestic um, five day um, opening though. Um, the article reads that, quote, Illuminations and Universal's Nintendo video game act adaptation, the Super Mario Brothers movie grossed an estimated 59 million at, at the Friday, um, at Friday's box office and now appears to be heading to clear the 195 million or more in its five day debut, well ahead of expectations at the top start of the year today. On Wednesday, Super Mario started off in North America with a huge 31.7 million and followed that up with a 26 million on Thursday. Super Mario has every chance of becoming the first blockbuster of 2023. Not only is the PG rated pitch picture whipping up interest among family. It's also appearing to the generation of adults who grew up playing or still playing Nintendo's Brawly, wildly popular Mario game, me in particular though. And while critics are mixed on the movie though, audience gave it an A in the cinematic score. Um, last time I checked, as I mentioned earlier, Rotten Tomato, um, they're basically, critics, last time I checked, was consider rotten, while the user review seems to be um, very good. So obviously this film is sort of depending on how you want to look at it though. But still, even for a, still, I have to say that is very, very impressive indeed for, for a box office though. Um, obviously from what I understand and assuming I'm hearing this correctly, the movie was like 100 million to make though. So there's a very good chance this movie will do very well at the box office. And I'm really glad though. I mean, we are seeing a trend where a lot, where movies and TV shows are doing, um, basically doing their shows based off the video game properties and IPs though. And while there have been some mixed results, we are seeing some that are doing um, very well though. The first two Sonic movies, uh, first Sonic movies, Last of Us on HBO Max, Netflix's Witcher, Cyberpunk Edge Runner, um, Castlevania, and Sonic Prime to a certain extent though. And now it seems as though Super Mario Brothers is going to be um, joining that list um, as well. It definitely shows that things have changed from back when during the, you know, the 80s and 90s um, to be exact, where it, looking back at now, wasn't really that great. So to see things have changed though, is certainly a um, very, very good thing um, indeed though. So I'm very glad that things are doing very well for this movie though. Um, again, I'm looking forward to seeing it though. I'm hopefully it's going to be as good as what user reviews are basically saying though. And given how well the box office is doing right now, I don't doubt in my mind that there's no no doubt that a sequel will probably more than likely be greenlit though. How long we have to wait for a sequel? That remains to be seen though. Hopefully you don't have to wait 30 years for a, another Mario movie to be exact though. And I do think that given how well this movie is doing the box office right now, I think this could definitely open the door to the possibility of the rumored Donkey Kong movie though, to possibly a Luigi Mansion spinoff. There are some who think that they could do a Nintendo Cinematic Universe, and while I think that's certainly not out of the realm of possibility, I'm sort of mixed on this to a certain degree, considering that while characters like Mario, Donkey Kong, Kirby could definitely appeal to everyone though, Franchises like Zelda, Metroid, or, and even recent ones like Xenoblade Chronicles, I feel like that one is more targeted towards somewhat of an older audience compared to where um, where Mario is though. So I'm sort of mixed in terms of whether this can work or not though. But again, it's too early to tell if Nintendo is gonna go that direction or not. But in either way, case though, it seems to be that the Mario movie is definitely off to a good start though. It'll be interesting to see how things are post spring break, post Easter holiday and all, and how th the movie will fare in the long run and all. But overall, I would say there's no doubt the Mario movie is definitely off to a very good start indeed though. I am looking forward to seeing this movie and all, and I don't doubt in my mind, given how well it's doing the box office at this moment, 
that there is a very high chance a sequel is more than likely um, going to happen and all. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Western Digital possibly doing another s storage card for the Xbox Series um, S and X? Do you think this is a good thing indeed? Do you think this it's good to have competition? Do you think this could lead to some of the price for these cards um, going down and all? What are your thoughts about now um, basically offering Europe players, Nintendo fans in Europe, now offering to send their Joy-Cons in even if they're, after their warranty has expired? Do you think this is a very good thing indeed though? Have you experienced any Joy-Con drift and all? And do you think Nintendo will try to address this issue with like their Switch successor in any way? What are your thoughts about Quantum Break um, basically leaving Game Pass temporarily though? Are you concerned about what this could be for other first party titles from Xbox though? Or for Microsoft in general though? Um, do you think they should take a different approach in terms of this licensing issue? Should say they do a Quantum Break 2 or anything like that? And what are your thoughts about the box office return so far for the Mario movie? Do you think, you're, are you surprised by these numbers? Are you not surprised um, at all? Do you think this more than likely is going to greenlit the sequel though? What direction do you think they should go with the sequel and everything like that? And do you think this will open the door to like the Donkey Kong, rumored Donkey Kong movie, to a rumored you know, Luigi's Mansion, to even possibility of trying to do like a Nintendo Cinematic Universe in any way? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal me, Patreon, or Steve Labs. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye.